All right, I'll say it again. Um, uh, uh, welcome to First Baptist Church of Redmond's uh, broadcast. Uh, most of us are sick uh, with the cold or flu, so uh, they um, uh, stayed home. But uh, we're going to have church anyway. Um, we'll be looking at John chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, and um, the uh, sermon title will be Light and Life, because uh, those are the themes. I have a Christmas Bible trivia um, um, video to show you, so without further ado, we'll look at the video. question everybody misses. It's army of angels.
How many did you get right? Uh, of course, Mrs. Norman got all of them right, of course. Um, she knows her Bible. Um, we're going to start off. Where is Jim? In the same place he was last week. Hooray! His, uh, um, his uh, sister uh, uh, went to church uh, at uh, a little uh, Baptist church down the road, and um, she liked it. So um, Jim was going to try to uh, go again. So... Um, and uh, this is uh, his uh, childhood home. We didn't have Awana last week because of illness, so we're having Awana night night um, uh, this week and December 8. Um, we didn't finish um, the Bible course yet. Um, we have one more lesson to go. So um, uh, be sure to uh, come next week and finish the Bible course. Uh, that um, will cover Revelation and uh, Bible interpretation uh, ideas, uh, how to study the Bible. But we're going to be doing um, um, Sunday school next. Um, in two weeks, uh, we'll have Life Explored. It's a Rico Thai study, and um, it's a flavor. Seven billion of us. All searching for the same thing. I hope that uh, whets your appetite. Um, it's um, about uh, life's challenges. Gilly Advent, what is it? Uh, Gilly Advent is a drive-through Christmas experience, as it says. It's December 19th through 20th, and it's at Camp Gilead. Uh, if you make your way up to uh, Camp Gilead, uh, you'll have to get in line because um, uh, it was busy last year, and they're doing the same thing this year. Uh, it's from five to eight, three hours, and um, uh, you'll get in line with your car and uh, uh, drive through, and they're having uh, different events, uh, different activities. Um, I think they're um, going to uh, try to give you a coffee or a cookie or something. Uh, you can have a snack, but there'll be many Christmas experiences, and um, I recommend you come. It's free. Uh, you can make a donation um, uh, at the end. But uh, it's December 19th and 20th, um, Sunday and Monday from 5 to 8 p.m. And hooray, who is at the top of the tree? Mrs. Johnston. <laughs> so um, we um, had a time decorating the church. And um, um, many people um, came. And midnight came. She approves. Uh, we hung the cross. And um, we uh, uh, didn't burn the Advent candles uh, this year, but um, um, we have them. And um, we had some up above. Hooray. Uh, it's important to have the ones above because uh, they have to hand everything down. And that's what it looks like. So, hooray. We have a busy calendar this month. Um, this month, um, on the uh, 5th, we are having lunch. Um, it's uh, easy to have lunch. And um, Awana Night Night is the um, theme from um, Awana this week. Uh, we postponed it a week. Uh, on December 9th, we're still having Women's Bible Study, yes? December 12th, we're having the Lord's Table next Sunday. Um, I had to um, make a decision because um, uh, my family has a, another uh, set of activities. Um, so December 19th, we're having the church family service. I will encourage um, you to take a reading. Um, uh, it can be a, a reading we select 
Uh, it could be a Bible reading. Um, you can sing a song or play a song. Um, and I'll have a short uh, challenge from the Bible, but you'll have two Christmases. Christmas Day is December 25th, Saturday. And you'll have a second Christmas because the church Christmas service um, will be the following Sunday, the following Sunday, the 26th. So would you like, uh, we've traditionally um, uh, not done Sunday school, but um, we've traditionally done a church breakfast at 10 o'clock. Uh, do you want to uh, have breakfast at 10 o'clock on the 26th? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll uh, not have Sunday school. Uh, we'll um, start it at um, uh, about 10 o'clock and uh, eat breakfast and um, have um, our Christmas service. Um, I don't have a date for the Korean church to uh, start joining us um, from two to five, but um, their uh, pastor is supposed to be coming this month. So um, uh, I'll update you and tell you uh, how it goes. Uh, you can use the Tidely app. Uh, we appreciate um, your um, giving uh, to support our church. So you can use the Tidely app. You can write a check, you can give cash or um, uh, anything else. So uh, without further ado, we'll uh, invite the praise team to join us. Uh, I'd like all of us to stand up for the morning hymn sing. And our first hymn this morning will be 131, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now residing. Yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations brighter. singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Captive is 
Thanks so much, praise team. Uh, we'll pause the stream and uh, go to prayer. So, uh, do you have anything to pray about?
is um, based on trees, but not this tree. A real tree. Uh, how many of you plan to get a real Christmas tree that's living? We're planning on it. Okay. Um, it's easy for us um, to um, have a box, and um, um, it's um, uh, normal to... Um, I think that um, most people have an artificial tree. It's uh, more difficult this year because um, even from Oregon on the next date, um, it's um, more expensive and trees um, are uh, more difficult to get. And, um, um, but what's most important about putting up a tree is this. The foundation. Uh, you don't want to let your tree get dry. You need to uh, give it a lot of water. Um, and in our house, um, every year, um, I won't be doing it because uh, I used to lay on the floor and um, uh, tighten the things up, but um, somebody else will do it. But um, if your tree's not straight, uh, it's... Um, um, a bugaboo in our house because if the tree's tipping, everybody wants to come and adjust it, and uh, sometimes it works, and sometimes it's worse off. So, what's most important about a tree? The foundation. Uh, if your foundation for a real tree is um, lacking or uh, not stable, uh, it can tip, and we've ha uh, never had a tree fall over. But I've heard um, uh, sometimes uh, our friends have had a tree fall over because it didn't um, adjust. Uh, that's a lesson four. Your foundation from God. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall, for it had be founded on the rock. Your foundation in God, in Christ, is most important for everything. All right, uh, Daniel will come up and lead us in the scripture reading today. Please rise and join me reading John 1, 4 through 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not grasp it. You may be seated. We're only preaching three verses. Um, that's one more verse than last week, but John is um, uh, starting his gospel like he started 1 John with significant words. So we'll, um, I want to dwell on the significant start of his gospel because it's a Christ honoring and um, it gives a testimony. Nature is stubborn. There's many natural disasters, uh, whether it's a flood or with this, a fire or uh, whether it's a, a hurricane or tornado. Brett McCracken writes in his book, The Wisdom Pyramid. I have lived in Southern California where climate-controlled houses and air-conditioned cars give us a measure of mastery over summer's triple digit temperatures or winter's atmospheric river storms. But we can't escape nature completely. A mudslide washes away a part of a highway one, making it impassable. Santa Ana winds will blow, causing us to cough up the air that tastes like a stubbed out cigarette as the poet Dana Glory uh, uh, aptly says. Months of no rain crisp the Sonoran 
landscape, making it ripe for autumn wildfires. The weather doesn't ask for our opinion. Nature reminds us that there is a world bigger than the one we made. A headline in the Los Angeles Times sums it up well. Quote, we may live in a post-truth era, but nature does not, unquote. Perhaps that one of the reasons I've loved uh, nature, God's beautiful and terrifying creation. In a world where man thinks he's a measure of all things, nature begs to differ. There is a, a genuine um, to nature in a sanity and in a sane world. It is uh, there to sustain our lives, to be enjoyed, but also to challenge us, to put us in our place, and to impart to us wisdom if we are willing to listen. Scripture is our supreme and only fallible source of the knowledge of God. But scripture itself tells us that wisdom can be found in God's creation. In Psalm 19 and Romans 1, 19 through 20. Nature's glory is not an end to itself. It's not a God to worship. It's a prism and amplifier of God's glory. It's a theater, a canvas, a cathedral. But God is always at center stage. I'll remind you that um, one of my first views of John was as a philosopher. In his Gospel and 1 John, John makes unique though meaningful statements. He's very observant and thoughtful. Um, I'm going to drink a cup of coffee and change masks for a reason. I can take a drink and be legal. I'm going to change my mask. I've worn this mask once before. And that's what it's talking about. It's an acrostic. The Greek words for um, light and life. Phos and Zoe. He continues in this vein. Uh, that's one of the first Christian uh, logos were um, the three letter words for light and life in the Greek language. So they share the um, middle um, letter. John speaks about how Jesus created everything. He speaks about how Jesus is the source of life-giving light. And it, uh, he explains why the world hates Jesus in these three verses. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into being that has come into being. Uh, in my sermons, I use the New American Standard Version, uh, that's uh, uh, 2020. And it's so uh, literal, so clear, I'm glad I've chosen to use it because um, the best help for the Greek language is the New American Standard Bible. All things, one by one, came into being through this divine word. Thus, the great truth that Christ created all things uh, for um, in the um, external work, all three persons cooperate, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is first of all stated positively and from the viewpoint of the past, stated negatively and from the viewpoint of the present, it is expressed thus. Apart from him, not a single thing that exists came in to being. God the Father delegated to God the Son to be the creator. 
two facts here are what's stressed. That the Christ himself was not created. He was eternally existing already. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are individual persons, but one God. That all things, one by one, without any exception, were created by him. Um, I'm uh, going to use um, some uh, Greek references. Uh, here the aorist tense is used. Um, it um, is used because creation is stated uh, to be already existing at a point uh, in time. So, boom, God created everything. The sun, the moon, the stars, all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Um, that's what it says, and that's precisely what it means. God, God the Son, created everything. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. Because life and light are joined uh, by the word was. The preposition has the tone of meaning that life was the light of human beings. Christ brought life and the life was the light to humanity. Not through him, but in him. Uh, just as in uh, 526, 648, 15, and 1125. The clause, in him was life, means that from all eternity and throughout the entire old dispensation, life resided in the word. The, the word was God. The source of life resides in the word. Hence, the Beth's reading of the verse um, has was, not is. I, I'm being specific. I'm being precise. But it's to God's glory. We sometimes wonder if Jesus is divine. How special is Jesus Christ? And God says through his writer, uh, the Apostle John, that Jesus was divine like God and he created all things. Why? Only God is the creator. Only God has the uh, power to create out of nothing. And so God said that through scripture, God the Son created everything. Why? It proves his divinity. But um, what is meant by the term life as used here? Does it uh, refer to every kind of life, physical as well as spiritual? The life of the butterfly as well as of the archangel? The life is characterized as the light of men. The source of where I, um, I'm able to, as an individual, a human, Discern what's right. Um, I told you before that um, I've uh, had occasion to uh, walk through the church with the lights off. And uh, half the time I trip on the pews because I don't see them. It's really dark here uh, at night. And um, I've tripped and uh, fallen before. And um, uh, if I don't use my phone to uh, give light, um, it's uh, going to happen half the time. I won't know where I am. God the Son is the source of our truth. God is the source of our truth. The source of what's right, what's wrong, what's true, and what's false. 
And without God's light, we can't know what to do. The light shines in the darkness and is not appropriated by sinful man. In him was light, and the light was the light of mankind. With reference to this light, the Baptist bears testimony. Um, he's going to, um, uh, in the next sermon, um, refer to, there was a man once sent from God, and his name was John. He's not talking about himself, the Apostle John. He's talking about John the baptizer. He gave testimony. <clears throat> the latter was not the original and perfect light in uh, whose radiance all other lights seemed to dim, but he came to bear testimony with respect to the light. Uh, I'm telling you where I'm going um, in uh, verses 8 and 9. This light is now identified with the one who is rejected by the world, but accepted by God's children. It is clear that the terms life and light belong to the spiritual sphere. Uh, that's the emphasis. Moreover, both in the fourth gospel and in the first epistle, the term life always moves in that realm. And uh, it's used 40, uh, 54 times. Um, that's unusual that um, um, life is mentioned that much. But John uh, writes that in him was life and uh, the word of life. So um, he emphasizes clearly that Jesus gives life and Jesus lights our life. Uh, at times it um, is ex um, interchanged with the expression everlasting life, like uh, John 5, uh, 524. When one Throughout the old dispensation, it is shining still, for it is the very characteristic of light to shine. You don't turn on the dark, you turn on the light. Moreover, where is the word Christ is the one in whom the life resides and by whom it is made to shine forth its light. He is also himself called the light. From passages such as um, um, John 3.20, um, um, Ephesians 6.12 references it, it is evident that this darkness does not merely behave negatively. On the contrary, the darkness hates the light. Um, I don't know if you notice, but um, even if somebody doesn't believe in God, 
Um, especially if somebody doesn't believe in God. Um, it's rare to use a swear word associated with blasphemy another faith. Everybody, even if they don't believe God, takes God's name, our God's name, in vain when they want to curse. Why? Because they innately hate Jesus. The ones they listen to hate Jesus. It refers to the world of mankind viewed as a hostile power which actively resists the light and refuses to accept it. What we have here is a manifestation of the absolute antithesis between light and darkness. You're um, in one world or the other. You're in the light or you're not in the light. The kingdom of God and the world. Christ and the forces of the evil one. Whether darkness refers to humans in their willful ignorance of God or to humans under Satan's sway, both of these, both of these means of grasp, um, and um, it refers to grasping with the hand, grasping with the mind's understanding, are suitable in this context. For us. The word was at the creation. All things, one by one, came into being through him. Of all that exists today, there is nothing that originated apart from him. In him, from eternity, and also after the fall, throughout the entire old dispensation, the full, rich life of God existed. Life is what um, life which is made manifest is called light. However, this world did not appropriate grasp the light. It's um, it is steadfastly refused and actively opposed the message of God's truth and God's love. It hated the Christ in whom the life of God. Um, resided and from whom as light it shines forth in the darkness. I'd like to uh, tell you a true story. Ryan and Morgan adopted a child from an orphanage in another country. They passed through all the legal processes of that country. Charlie, they named him, was their son. But right before the day when they were supposed to pick up Charlie from the orphanage in another country, things changed. I'm familiar with that era. Um, and I know in Romania and a lot of Eastern European countries, they became to view um, adoption as um, against their countries. There were going to be some political peoples, and the country froze the process. No more children were going to be able to leave that country. Charlie could not come to Ryan Morgan, so they decided to go to him. They flew over from the U.S. and basically camped outside the orphanage. They spent half their time with their son and the other uh, half the time lobbying the courts and meeting with the government officials, pleading them to release their son. After a few weeks, a few weeks transpired, when Morgan came home, but Brian stayed. It was Christmas time. This was not where he wanted to be at Christmas, away from home, far from family. But here was the father who loved his son. Since his son could not come to him, 
he was going to go to that son. But he was going to fight for that son. There would be more days and weeks of struggle, but wonderfully, Ryan was able to bring Charlie home. That Christmas, as Ryan battled corrupt systems on the other side of the world, he was a picture of the kind of eternal father that Jesus is for anyone who asks him to be. Jesus went farther from us than Ryan went for his son. He didn't, live, um, he didn't leave a country of privilege to move to a country of poverty. No, he left the riches of heaven to come to a world of pain. He did all that because he loves us. He did all that because he wants to be with us. He came to ensure that we could go to be with him. And it cost him far more than a plane ticket. He died for us. Please rise for our closing song, Change My Heart, O God. Phones, uh, my battery died. Uh, let's close in prayer. Uh, dear Father, thank you for giving us your Son. He came to live with us. He left heaven and lived as a human being. He was the only second Adam that was the true Adam. He was the perfect man. Let us learn from him. Let us prepare to see uh, his surprising acts. Life in the sun is what he would inspire to. And his life gives light to all of us. Let us live in that light. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you.